Okay. Um, today's uh, discussion is on emergencies in neurology. Thank you for the trainee who has consented to record this procedure, which is very important to create a source for future references and also for revision. You have got an um, 80 year old man presented to AE septic. And the medical team has evaluated him and destabilized him. Now his CT scan has shown hydroeritronephrosis of the right kidney. The hydroureter extended up to the upper ureter where there is a 1.8 centimeter stone causing complete blockage. How are you going to evaluate him? Um, so I will first evaluate him by attending to him urgently in A&E. Um, he has an infected obstructed kidney with evidence of sepsis. Um, so when I arrive, I will um, assess him adopting a CRISP algorithm and I will uh, initiate a sepsis 6 protocol uh, to include uh, taking of blood cultures, a venous gas to measure the lactate and hemoglobin, I'll administer him intravenous fluids, and I'll catheterize him to measure the urine output. Um, I'll apply high flow oxygen, and I will also administer intravenous broad speech spectrum antibiotics as per trust guidelines. Um, I'll consider um, early critical care involvement, and I'll then take a, a focus history from the patient. Um, I'll ask him about the presence of any pain, fever, rigors, vomiting, any preceding low uh, urinary symptoms, lots of visible hematuria. Um, I'll confirm his uh, past medical, surgical and urological history, um, including a previous history of any stones or urological surgery. Um, I'll establish if he's on any antiplatelet or anticoagulant medications, and I'll ask about a family history of stones. Um, I'll then perform a focused physical examination with a chaperone present um, to elicit any abdominal or loin tenderness. Um, or any palpable masses. Um, in terms of further assessments, I'll uh, um, assess the further blood tests uh, with the urine dipstick analysis. Um, I'll send off a midstream urine specimen for culture, um, and I'll ensure that his baseline blood tests include a full blood count, CRP, urea and electrolytes, uh, calcium and uric acid, and a clotting screen. Okay, he is quite stable now. As you said, uh, you have covered the sepsis protocol also. So he is quite stable and uh, he is conscious, he is able to talk well and his uh, blood parameters showed EGFR at 30, his normal EGFR is in the region of usually 85 and CRP is 800 with WCC showing a shift towards the neutrophils showing acute infection. Otherwise the full blood count is relatively normal with good hemoglobin and uh, how are you going to take him further? Um, so I'm very concerned about the AKR but also the significantly elevated CRP. Um, he needs urgent decompression of his right kidney um, and I'll, the options in this scenario would be either between be between a retrograde right ureter extent insertion or right percutaneous nephrostomy. Um, given that he is septic um, my, uh, I would recommend a percutaneous um, nephrostomy um, and therefore I will um, speak um, urgently with the interventional radiologist um, in order to arrange this, provided that there are no um, contraindications to this. So what contraindications do you have in your mind? Um, so these would be, for example, if the patient is on um, anticoag anticoagulation therapy, um, especially one of the uh, DOACs, um, which cannot be readily reversed with a uh, reversal agent that is not available um, as well. Um, also, if the patient is morbidly obese um, and therefore nephrostomy may be more technically challenging and may fail because of that. What anticoagulant you mentioned? What group it belongs to? Can you explain it further? Uh, so these are the direct oral anticoagulants, um, such as um, Apixaban, Rivaroxaban, and the Bigatran. Um, as, as opposed to Warfarin, um, they, um, there are reversal agents available, but um, they are not as readily available, as, for example, with Warfarin, um, where there is vitamin K, frozen plasma, or uh, prothrombin complex concentrate. Okay. 
This patient is not on any direct acting anticoagulants, but unfortunately he is on warfarin and his INR is 2.9. Um, so, um, I am also concerned that his sepsis has potentiated the INR. Um, in this scenario, um, given the time critical nature of his um, surgery, um, my preference then would change um, and counsel the patient about a retrograde stent insertion. However, I'm also aware that given the size of the stone, um, it could have been significantly impacted. Um, Therefore, I'll still pursue a right nephrotomy insertion, but I will speak with hematology um, to see um, to seek advice on how to quickly reverse the warfarin um, and the INR. Um, and the most likely um, treatment would be with a prothrombin um, complex concentrate or fresh frozen plasma. Okay. Um, is there any other method by which you can reverse the INR? Um, it can also be reversed with intravenous injection or vitamin K, um, but this usually takes um, up to six hours um, for the effects to, um, for the INR to be fully reversed, and it may not reverse it fully and may need uh, repeated injections. Okay, so if this patient is not on warfarin, you said you prefer nephrostomy compared to stenting. Can you substantiate that? Um, so. In the case of this patient's characteristics, um, he is um, septic, um, so a general anaesthetic could increase um, the risk um, of his um, circulatory response to that. Um, the stone is also large and could therefore have been impacted, um, and therefore it may be more difficult to um, get a guide by an extent um, beyond the stone. Okay, is there any evidence to say that the nephrostomy will drain the kidney better than stent or vice versa? Um, the main evidence in terms of the um, comparing these methods comes from Pearl's paper in 1998 um, for obstructing ureteric calculi causing sepsis. Um, it didn't find any difference between the two methods um, in terms of um, the time to return to a normal temperature and white cell count and also the time uh, taken to do the procedure. Okay, so this patient um, was taken by the hematology team to reverse the warfarin. He was given IV vitamin K and also fresh frozen plasma is in place. And by around four hours time when they repeated the INR, it came to 1.6. So what is your choice now? Um, the INR is 1.6 um, and it will depend upon um, speaking with radiology, um, if they um, would agree to perform a nephrostomy with an INR above 1.5, um, if they were to say that they still need the INR to be lowered further, then my choice, and again, given the time critical nature of the surgery, would be a retrograde uh, ureteric extent insertion, um, because um, no kind of punctures would be made, and no incisions would be made. Okay. This patient was discussed with intervention team and they are happy with uh, trying a nephrostomy. He had uneven full six French pigtail nephrostomy placement, frank purulent plus drain. What is your next approach? I'll keep the patient in overnight. I'll ensure that um, critical care have seen this patient. Um, I will continue him on um, broad spectrum intravenous antibiotics. Um, my choice, provided that he's not penicillin allergic, uh, would be intravenous Comax Glab and a therapeutic dose of gentamicin. Um, I'll ensure that he has um, hourly observations for the next six hours and then four hourly observations to monitor for further sepsis um, and that he has repeat bloods um, the next morning um, and that um, once his sepsis has stabilized and is settled, uh, then an um, antigrade a ureteric extent insertion could be attempted. Um, in order to facilitate a uh, secondary definitive uh, ureteri anoscopy and laser lithotripsy. Okay, you mentioned about gentamicin. How will you calculate gentamicin considering his renal failure? Um, so the um, initial dose of gentamicin um, would be administered and then I'll follow the Hartford regime and protocol, um, which involves taking a, a gentamicin level at six to 14 hours post-dose 
um, and then extrapolating the level against the um, against the nomogram, um, which will then determine the uh, next interval um, interval of dosing and when it can next be given. Okay, uh, the patient passed his first twenty four hours. Okay, we'll finish with this question. And um, he is uh, not having any further fever episodes. And uh, next day, also the you, the the first meet haven't had any obvious urine. It's only the purulent pus, which is little bit getting better. What is your long term plan for his kidney? Um, so for this uh, for this man's kidney, um, if there is evidence of cortical thinning on the um, CT scan, then I'll request a DMSA renogram to determine the split function. Um, however, if there is good cortical thickness, um, then once the sepsis settles, I'll counsel them about undergoing an antibody ureteric insertion um, and then a definitive ureteric endoscopy and laser lithotripsy to treat his stone. Um, although, if facilities are available, I'll discuss them with a local stone MDT. Good. So, we'll complete that scenario now. Um, straightforward scenario, nice performance, uh, no doubt at all. You are quite clear in what you want regarding the stenting versus nephrostomy. I'm happy with that. Um, yes, slightly leaning towards nephrostomy is better. You can substantiate that by saying that we are not subjecting the patient to uh, general anesthesia. General anesthesia will be a challenging one in a septic patient. You can use that even though we don't have any other strong evidence to say the nephrostomy is better than stenting. And um, the other point which I will use to lean towards nephrostomy is the chances of a successful nephrostomy in uh, hydroureter nephrosis is very high compared to uh, retrograde JJ stent placing in an uh, obstructed ureter due to a large stone. Uh, so what happens after troubling the anesthetist, ITU team, booking an ITU bed, reversing the warfarin as much we can, and then if there is no way the guide wire could be passed across the stone, then we are back to square one, isn't it? And yep. um, this patient is not suitable for any lithotripsy with this uh, obvious uh, hydropionephrosis. So you can bring few more strong points to support your view of getting towards nephrostomy rather than the stenting. That is one thing I will add. The second thing is uh, gentamicin, good antibiotic, but since I said there is a drastic fall in the EGFR, you yourself better to uh, just add one sentence saying that I will tailor the gentamicin dose based upon the EGFR and I will be very cautious in deciding especially the second dose. Usually yep. one dose gentamicin is usually well tolerated. Uh, during the second dose I will do a blood gentamicin levels. So you can bring few more points to say that um, you are working in 360 degrees. So what's happening is in the exam there is always an answer to the question that you guys are very good but a slight later thinking uh, based upon that particular scenario will really fetch good marks. Um, giving gentamicin for a septic patient is the answer to any septic patient but keeping an eye on the EGFR and tailoring the dose and monitoring especially the second dose with blood gentamicin if you bring that that is specific for that particular patient. Yeah. Yeah. Playing for one particular patient is very easy you are just facing one patient if you start speaking theory then the examiner can anything under the sun and then it's, it's a huge topic then very good